guys. Welcome back. We're here to answer your questions. We're probably going to be focusing on keto and intermittent fasting. Karen, That's a shocker. <laughs> Karen is here and... Uh, um, we're going to do, do something new today. Let's do something very brand, brand new. new. Well, Different. Yeah, I think people want to know about, they have very specific questions and they want answers. What if we did something to... really different? Like, let's talk about... What? Donuts. We've already covered that extensively oh. before. And by the way, guys, if there's anything that we suggest, it's not meant to diagnose you or, or replace your medical care. This is based on, you know, just... Stuff that, that you can research with the help of your medical doctor, okay? So that being said, uh, we're going to just dive right in to the questions on social media. Karen, what do you got? <laughs> Are you prepared? No? Take the first caller. Okay. Hey, Ellen, you're from actual, you're right down the street. You're Virginia? from actual. Ellen, are you there? Yes, I'm here from Virginia Beach, yes. Oh, uh, great. great. Yes. Hi. Hi. Uh, my question um, about three years ago, I found you, and I started looking up everything, your videos, and I'm like, oh, wow, I need some nutrition. So I went to the store, and I bought vitamin D, started taking 1,000, and I was like, well, I'll take 2,000. Okay, you like a higher dose sometimes is good for you. Mm -hmm. So within that time, I started tripping and falling. I went to a neurologist. I was diagnosed. I had an MRI with uh, MS. So... Uh, mm -hmm. He was asking me, I was telling him I was taking vitamin D. So then when I ordered your stuff, it's like 10000 So I'm like, wow, this is good. So I'll start taking two, uh, two of the pills, which would be 20000 Well, I went to him, and he did the blood work. And he's like, okay, everything's good. But I was telling him I was doing 2000 not 20000 And he's like, oh, everything's good. So I'm like, okay, well, if. Two pills are good. Four would be better. So um, <laughs> That's my back in motto. March when I went, uh, back in March when I went, uh, he did the blood work. Well, he didn't give me the results. He skipped over that. So when I went in October, he's like, "Oh, your blood, uh, your vitamin D is too high. It's 200." And to cut it off, and my daughter was there, and she's like, "Oh, well, she's taking this stuff from YouTube." And this, I was like, "He's a doctor. He knows what he's talking about." So I'm like. He told me to quit taking everything, so I quit taking my vitamin D. But I'm like, when should I start retaking my vitamin mm -hmm. D? Because it does accumulate in the body, but I don't. I've got extra pills that I bought a lot of yours, and I know it's good for me. Okay, so great. So about how many should I take? Well, let's let's just cover that, Ellen. I think that um, brings up a good point. So I'm just going to try to summarize vitamin D. There, I do have a, a lot of videos on this. Anytime you take vitamin D. It's helpful if you also take vitamin K2. They work together. Um, I, if you're not going to get sun, like in the winter, I recommend taking vitamin D. Take, you know, take one. Um, you know, it's like we, what they did is they, um, they used um, various measurements of vitamin D and IUs instead of milligrams. So that kind of throws you off. If you, like, for example, I think 10,000, don't quote me on this, but I think I'm correct. Uh, 10,000 IUs is like one milligram. Um, so 10,000 IUs sounds like a tremendous amount. Even like in vegetables, you have a vitamin A at 30,000 IUs for in kale per cup. You might think, oh my gosh, that's off the charts. But in reality, we're talking about a different unit of measurement that's different than milligram. Um, so if you're getting enough sun, you don't need to take vitamin D, uh, D3. Um, the reason why some people take vitamin D3 in higher amounts with K2 is to help uh, support their immune system a bit more, to help support um, and kind of help uh, clear out excess calcium sometimes because it, you want the, the D3 helps to remove calcium and, and it puts it into the bone. Some other people take it to support osteoporosis and um, osteopenia. And, um, but vitamin D is... Um, it really acts like a hormone in the body, and a lot of people are low. Obviously, if you take a period of, for a period of time, get tested. If you then show up being high, don't take it for a while, and then start back taking a small amount over time. So it's something you have to play around with, um, but I do recommend taking a small amount, or at least like one pill, through the winter months, because you're not going to get any sun. But um, there's not a huge amount of danger in it being slightly high over a period of time. 
Uh, maybe if you take massive amounts without K2, <clears throat> there could be an excess calcium issue, but typically um, it's not going to be a, like a major issue. But thanks for your call and watch my other videos. What's so funny? What is so funny? <laughs> I'm These, trying to remember all the different points. No, I'm not laughing at you. Oh, you're I not laughing at me. These guys are just funny on social media this morning. Oh, okay. What's so funny? You're not listening. You're. I'm you're not. I'm not at, paying attention to you. Right. You're laughing at. Well, because all the I have comments. a job to do. I have to oh, read. I, got it. I, got I have it. to read. Okay. There's a question for me, actually. Oh, good. Yeah. How about what that? Is the, what is the question? The question is, Karen, did or has keto helped you through perimenopause? Ooh, ooh. Well, first we have to assume I'm through menopause. Well, you're. Well, how can you? How can that be? Because you're like 30, <laughs> 30 years, years old. Twenty-two years old. Right. No, I, uh, Bethany. I have to tell you, um, I had no menopausal. Oh, I'm sure they're love, love hearing that. I'm sorry. I and I'm sure it's because of my diet. Uh, I had no hot flashes. I had no symptoms. I just all of a sudden was no longer menstruating, and I, I, now there are things like uh, I see a difference in uh, the tone of my skin as I'm getting older and stuff like that. And yes, I think intermittent fasting and keto definitely makes a difference with that. I see when I'm not being as disciplined, I see a difference in my skin, and when I'm being more disciplined. But I didn't have. I didn't have any symptoms, so. I'm sure she's going to be really happy about <laughs> Sorry, that, Bethany, Karen. and That's... anybody else. I'd like you. Well, I could just say yes. Yes, it did. Okay. There we go. Okay. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Question for you, Dr. Berg. Yes. Does stevia break your fast? Well, I did a survey on that, and um, I, before I answer that, I just have to clarify a very confusing topic for a lot of people. Just realize, guys. There's a difference between breaking your fast and breaking your ketosis and breaking your weight loss. So let me just kind of quickly cover this because um, it's actually really simple if you think about it in three separate topics. So fasting is not eating. Okay, you can drink water, but anything you do, I don't care, whatever, it's going to break your fast. That doesn't necessarily mean it's going to break your ketosis. It doesn't mean it's going to stop your weight loss. But anything that you're taking, anything is going to break the fast. But that's not a problem. I wouldn't worry about that because if you're doing vitamins or a little stevia, it's not a big deal. You break a fast. It means you're eating something. Okay, temporarily something happens. It shifts slightly low. It's not an issue. The problem comes in when you're, when you're consuming things and you're talking about breaking your, your ketosis, whatever, right there. So um, if you're anything that you eat calorie-wise is going to um, raise insulin a little bit. Okay, like to various degrees. So if the thing that's going to not raise your insulin as much is fat. Protein will increase insulin and definitely carbohydrates. Okay, so then now let's talk about actual weight loss. If you're doing fat, it's, it's going to slow down your weight loss because your body's going to actually even use that as ketones. If you're doing carbs, your body's going to use that and it's going to stop your weight loss and you're going to gain more weight. Uh, protein the same way if you do too much. So the whole point is that um, you want to use, kind of look at the whole big picture. Stevia uh, may slightly um, knock you out of ketosis for some people. Other people it doesn't. I think it's a very small, insignificant um, um, issue. So I wouldn't even worry about it. So go ahead and keep doing insulin. The thing you want to be careful, um, keep doing stevia. The thing you want to be careful of is maltitol. That's the alternative sweetener that you want to stay away from because that will really bump you out of fat burning and ketosis. What? <laughs> what, what? What's so funny now? What did I say? <laughs> I don't know what it is. Oh, I, gosh. Okay. So here's a question. Lynn wants to know if you can give some information on... <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry. What? Okay. Lynn wants to know if you can give some information on diatomaceous earth. I know that's Couldn't not Couldn't you answer that? Couldn't you answer that since um, you're the, the expert bugs. now? It kills the bugs. <laughs> we almost started without Diatomaceous you. Diatomaceous earth is basically prehistoric fossils of phytoplankton. That's what, that's what I was going to say. Okay, good. And uh, so it's, it's really, what was the question? Is it going to knock you out of ketosis? No, what was the question? 
Was it just good to just take? Just data. Just data. It, it's, I did a video on it. It's good to take. I think it's good for the immune system. Uh, it's also um, good as a um, general thing to help your health, Karen. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what the specific question is. You want me to do a seminar on it? No, no. Okay. There's a video. There's a video on it. There's a video. There's so many topics to talk about, so I'd rather you watch the videos because um, I do a lot of videos, and if I keep, you know, giving you a little bit of data, see, here, here's the issue. That Teach a man to fish. Here's, here's yeah. what happens, Karen. Um, I have to really think through the videos that I do because there are, you give the general information, but there's always going to be another question attached to it in mm -hmm. some way that maybe I missed a piece of data. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting how I have to really think every possible question related to that question. And then, but then if I have it too long, people complain about that. <laughs> it's too long. Why well, can't you do it? Well, there's always going to be unique, un unique giddies. <laughs> That's a new word. I like that. I do like that. Yeah. So it's fine. Okay. Okay, good. Thank so you. now here's a common subject anxiety. Yeah. What about okay. it? How would you recommend handling or decreasing that in the keto IF diet? B1. Vitamin B1. B1. Not actually. that you're diagnosing or treating anything in any way. Oh, I am. Oh, I no, am. you're not. I totally am right you now. I'm diagnosing He's joking. B1 deficiencies. Oh. Yeah. Um, now, B1, try, try that and see if it doesn't just help you greatly. B1 is amazing. Nutritional yeast is what you want to consume. Um, there is um, the problem with uh, B1, it's hard to find a natural source. Um, watch my videos on that because I, I kind of give you some other sources. But it's okay to take maybe some short-term uh, synthetic B1 as long as you also take the natural with it for nutritional yeast. That's my recommendation. Now I'm sticking to it. Okay, good. Let's go to Joan from Utah. Are you there? I'm here. Hi. Hi. I have a couple of questions for you. I just want to say it's so good to hear you and Karen. Um, I have a couple of questions. One, the first question was, is, um, do you have any uh, videos out on sunken in eyes? Mm -hmm. And my second question is, is um, on your digestive formula and your, your gallbladder formula, do you, um, if I take them both together three times a day and I've gotten diarrhea from them, mm -hmm. and I was just wondering, if you had any suggestions for me on, okay. should I back off on it? Should I take them together? Sure. Let me just first cover the sunken in eyes. Uh, I, I did a video on that, which is dark circles around eyes, which could be similar in what you're asking. But um, he, the sunken in eyes could come from a, a detoxing. It can come from being anemic. It can come from, um, you know, all winter long, you avoid the sun, you know, like, and then all of a sudden you get the sun and your, your skin starts glowing. Um, so it also mainly comes from a lack of sleep. So these are all things that you want to look at. Um, uh, I don't really have time to go with it too in depth, but I would focus on getting more sleep, doing keto and IF, and see if that doesn't really help you. Uh, when you don't get enough sleep, you do get this, like, these circles underneath the eye, uh, eyes. Now, as far as the digestive formula and gallbladder formula, uh, the gallbladder formula has bile salts, and that can create um, loose bowels if you take too much. So I would keep taking the, uh, the digestive formula, but back off on the gallbladder formula, just maybe one a day, and that should do fine. So if you, the way you know you're taking too much gallbladder formula is when you have diarrhea or your bowels are too loose. But it's great for people that have constipation. All right, thanks for your question. I have a cool question. You have another question. I do. Donna mm -hmm. on Facebook, she said, if the body fat is very low in an elderly woman, will mm -hmm. this limit how many ketones she can produce for her brain each day? We're treating her cognitive decline <clears throat> with a keto diet. Would you supplement with exogenous ketones for brain fuel in a low BMI woman? <clears throat> this is probably the only situation I would recommend exogenous ketones. If someone is like they're frail and they're, they have dementia or Alzheimer's or Parkinson's and or an, a top athlete that wants a little extra energy because you're going to 
You can feed the brain uh, these ketones. I do not recommend it for anyone else uh, because truthfully, you could just get it from eating fat. Your body can convert. Um, so I would highly recommend if she's thinner to actually increase the fat and you know, just take some MCT oil or you know, other types of fats and that should actually make enough ketones. But yeah, it's not a problem taking more exogenous ketones. How'd you like that answer? Did you like, like that one? That was I, good, wasn't it? I thought you'd like that one. That was a winner. Where's my bell? I thought you'd like that ding, one. Ding, 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 ding. So Ruth is from Texas, and she has a very interesting question that I think I'm going to give to Karen. Ruth, how, how are you, Ruth? <laughs> Hi, I'm doing good. How are you, Dr. Bird? Karen? Hi. Great. And I, I heard you have a question for Karen today. What is it? Yeah. Well, first, I called a couple of weeks ago talking about urine and that my urine had a smell to it. And um, I was thinking that it was the supplements. It's not the supplements. I've already figured that out. Mm. I rewatched your video on urine and the color of it. And it, I finally heard where you said, if your urine's too dark, drink more water. I uh, always had it in my head that if I'm not thirsty, I don't need to drink. Okay. But, you know, you kind of drown out what you don't want to hear. So right. I've added more water to my diet and things have gotten a lot better. Okay. Um, I recently had to take a urine test for uh, some insurance that I'm trying to get, and it came back with protein and albumin mm. in the urine, mm -hmm. but I'm assuming that's because I hadn't been drinking a lot of water. Mm. Can be. Is that right? That totally can be that way. Yep. Absolutely. That's, okay. Yeah. So that kind of goes into this next thing where a friend of mine was telling me that he doesn't need to do keto, that all he needs to do is drink his own urine hmm. and fast. You know, while he's fasting, all he's doing is drinking urine. And he knows who he is. Okay. And I told him, well, I'm going to talk to Dr. Berg about that because um, as far as I can tell, that's just drinking all the vitamins and minerals and whatever that you could just do by doing supplements. Hmm. Mm -hmm. But he said something about stem cells in the urine and how it made his feet very soft and his skin very soft, and he felt great. And I thought, well, maybe that's just the fasting. Maybe that has nothing to do with the urine that right. you're drinking. Well, that's a great question for Karen, and I'm so glad you brought that up. <laughs> so go ahead, Karen. What's the answer to that? Uh, my answer to that is that I... <clears throat> Yeah. I, go ahead. I, go ahead. I'm I have never consumed my own urine, but I believe you did once. No, I did not. You didn't? Never. Never. <laughs> oh, you put it on a, a rash or something. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> Look, I... <laughs> was that another boyfriend or something that was uh, using a... Another, that, was, that was another boyfriend. Okay, good. Not so this he, boyfriend. Here, here's the... Oh, I thought you were going to let me answer this oh, you Oh, you have an answer? Okay, good. Yeah. You know what? I, I've, I've heard of this, mm -hmm. this uh, application of urine and the mm -hmm. drinking of urine. Yeah. Um, I think you're right about the skin and the intermittent fasting. And, you know, urine is also a waste product. This is my... It's used in the East. It's used in the East. Certain, certain You know what, then, I think... What's your... Who's, who are we talking to? Philosophy. Ruth. Ruth. In Texas. Go for it. <laughs> We, we would like to no. no. you're now part of the Berg research team. No, I think, I and think this we would a like trend. you to do this. It's keto for, with a twist. Keto with a lemon <laughs> twist. No. Put a little lemon I'm in it. I'm not doing it. Come on, I'm Ruth. I'm not doing it. No. Listen, no, I, I'm no, not no, saying. No. Keto I'm not, is Ruth, good enough for me. <laughs> Ruth, I'm not saying it won't work. Um, I'm just saying I just can't recommend it. It's probably just not going to go over very well. Um, with a lot of people. Um, we could do I it just, in a capsule form. Yeah, I, I'm not going to go there. I just, there's We could make it ourselves. That might, we don't even need to outsource raw material. It's inexpensive <laughs> material, but, you know, I just can't, I just can't bring myself to that. And I'm sure there's some valid reasons or valid great success. Um, okay. But, you know what, I think I'm going to drop that top like, like a hot potato, like a... <laughs> don't try. <laughs> I'm not going to okay. Don't try. Thanks, I'm not Ruth. i say that. Thanks, Ruth. <laughs> Wow. Okay, good. Yeah, they're so good today, I need right? So to, I need to go right to Donna really quick from Ontario. Okay. You had a question. Donna, are you there? Yes, Dr. Berg. Yes, I am. Thank you very much for taking our calls. It's, Absolutely. Uh, so good to talk to you. 
Good I have uh, listened to you and Dr. Boz in um, October the 10th. I dove right into it, still had lots of questions, but I thought I'm going to start the OMAD uh, one meal a day. Mm-hmm. And so for three and a half days, I did the, um, the OMAD and didn't, didn't do much, but I thought I had to give it time. So over two months, October or December 10th, uh, I finally quit because of the season, first of all, but I have not lost anything. I lost four inches off my my stomach, but and that that's a big deal. But I am not losing any weight, mm-hmm. and so I went to um, holistic medicine practitioner, and she's got me sleeping again. I was only sleeping four hours mm. a night, maybe five and a half. Yeah. But I was so diligent with the mm-hmm. keto. Um, had my fist of protein and I could eat my cheese and I wrote down everything I ate, but um, so, I, I, I just got so discouraged. A couple questions. Why I have. didn't I lose weight? Okay. First, of, okay. first question, did you have any bloating on this program? None. Okay, my cravings good. were gone in a week. Right. It was wonderful. Second question, did you find that... Um, when you came up to that one meal a day, were you actually hungry for the meal or not? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I was ready for it, but I drink the carbonated water. Uh-huh. So, and I'm not a breakfast eater anyway, so when I went off of it and, just, and did the two meals a day, I mean, I, I would have like my walnuts and my cheese for my lunch and then have my coffee, um, bulletproof mm-hmm. coffee, and then ate supper with my husband's salad and my protein and how old are you i am 61 okay do you have a any? young 61 okay good <laughs> do you have any thyroid issues that you know about none okay good good so, health great so a couple things i want to mention donna uh this happens to some people when you're, you're not losing weight but you're losing some inches the fact that you weren't sleeping is a real big factor uh because that can keep your cortisol high which could slow down your weight loss also postmenopausal uh, metabolism is going to be slower. So if you're doing keto and you want to speed up the results, what you have to do a lot of times is drop your actual fat, and that would be like the bulletproof coffee especially, because that's oil, that oil in that is that, that all has to be converted to ketones instead of your body making your own fat reserve turn into ketones. So I think if you did that with less added fat, um, that would be a really good thing to do. Uh, the other thing too you have to realize is that if you're losing inches, it's actually working and you may be building up proteins and your, might, your body might be in the healing mode, but the, the whole concept is to get healthy to lose weight first. And some people take you know several months of getting healthy first. Um, the way that you know it's working is you have other factors that are improving. Energy, less cravings, no hunger, better skin, more vitality, those type of things. So I would just basically cut down the fats a little bit and then maybe do periodic fasting, like long-term fasting, like not long-term, but just uh, prolonged fasting, like maybe once a month. That will actually speed things up. I think that's really what you need to do and also add the little more sleep and that'll help you greatly. Thanks, Donna. Hey, Trish, is it Trisha or Tricia? from Mississippi. Trisha, hey. how are it's, you? Hi, it's Trisha. I'm good, how are you? Great. So did you have any Great. questions on urine or other questions? Because the <laughs> questions on urine go to Karen, I'll take all the other questions. <laughs> no questions on urine. Okay, Thank good. you, Trisha. Okay, first of all, <laughs> Karen, your hair always looks so pretty on here. I always say that in the comments, but your oh, hair always thanks. looks great. Thanks. Nice she and thick. spends like two hours on it every single day. With no, I don't. No, she does not. No, she does not. <laughs> okay, first of all, thank you for everything that you do. I have lost 63 pounds. Yay! Wow. And look, before that, I was going to the gym two hours with a trainer, and I thought I was eating right, but I was eating, like, yogurt and fruits and chicken. And I only lost 10 pounds in two years. But when I started keto, um, I've lost 63. So thank, thank that you for that. great. Well done. Love it. All right. I have a few questions. Okay. Um, I'm having really severe cramps all night. I wake up, and they last about 30 minutes. 
and I mean, I can't even like put my shoes on in the day, you know, and I point my toes, I get cramped mm -hmm. really bad. Okay. I have major hair loss, like globs come out in my hands when I wash my hair or, or brush it. Okay. So, so a question I, I have I'm for you, sure. are, are you taking any electrolytes or nu nutrients or nutritional yeast or anything like that? I just started nutritional yeast uh, okay. a couple of days ago. Okay, good. Um, I do um, some BC, BCC, whatever it's called. BCA. Branch amino acids? Yeah. Yes, I don't know if that does anything, but. Okay. And I got your vitamin D and K2. Okay, great. The thing that you really need um, is my electrolytes because it has a lot of potassium in there. Um, like it has like a thousand milligrams per serving size and it has all the trace minerals. And that's why when you do keto, um, your body requires a lot more electrolytes and B vitamins. So you just started the nutritional yeast. So that should greatly help the hair situation. But then you need the electrolytes for um, everything else. And I think that should kick off the cramps. On a rare occasion, people are taking electrolytes and they still get cramping in the calf, and that's simply because they're, they're actually consuming too much salt. If you take too much sodium chloride or even the sea salts, that can knock out some of the effect of potassium magnesium. So just kind of use that as a, a monitoring device if you have to lower some salt and increasing more sodium, in, I'm sorry, more potassium and magnesium. Okay, good question. But yes, Karen does have some nice hair. She's She's um, been lucky that way, and uh, um, she's always had nice hair. I'm jealous. Mine, mine is like so straight. <laughs> I have to use gel and hair dryers constantly. No, I don't. I don't. But gel. <laughs> All right. What do you got? What do you got going in social media here? Okay. Well, somebody is asking if chromium lowers insulin. I think it does. I think it does because it actually makes. Uh, uh, insulin more sensitive, so it actually helps insulin resistance. It, it makes um, your sugar, blood sugars a lot better. Um, yeah, that's one of the trace minerals that it, it's really good to take if you have blood sugar issues or even diabetes. And do you have to take it in what form? Um, they have, a, I think it's called a trivalent form, which is best, and it's a, it's a type of uh, um, form that actually your body can uh, absorb and utilize. It's like a pill or yeah, a powder? Yeah, a tablet. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. But that was it? All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's go to Maria. She's been waiting for 50 minutes and 10 seconds. Wow. Are you there, Maria? I certainly am. How are you? Great. Great. Um, the question I have, I have two. Um, one is um, my son has sinus things going on, and I had watched your videos, and you recommended oregano oil, which didn't really do anything, and the serapeptase. I'm giving him the capsules. I'm taking the stuff out of the capsule and putting a little bit of water at night, but not really seeing results. Okay. I don't know if I stick with it or if I'm on the wrong path. And the other thing I do is I um, crush up nutritional yeast mm -hmm. and calcium, I think it's citrate, into his wheatgrass juice powder mm -hmm. and give it to him for some ADHD-like things. Mm -hmm. But again, I'm not really seeing it. So I don't know if I just need to stay the course or if I'm on the wrong course altogether. Does he have sinus problems year-round? Or are they seasonal? Yes. Oh, year round? No, year round. Okay. How old For is he? years. Yep. How old is he? Seven. 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 Is he is he doing uh, healthy keto at all? Oh, no, I mean I'm trying, but okay. we're we're way away. It's hard when you when you uh, start your kids off without you know maybe the yes. best diet in the world and try to switch them midway. That is somewhat difficult. Wouldn't you agree, Karen? Yes. Okay. Good. Do you know what I asked you? Something is difficult, and okay. I know she's talking about a child. Wow. Okay. Sorry, Good. I was reading. Yeah. All right. So, hey, so this is what I would recommend. I think uh, a lot of times these sinus issues could be more fungal in nature, and they tend to grow up there, and they, they actually cycle all year around, in which case a really good remedy would be black seed oil. Uh, you can get them in a tablet form, just a small amount, um, and myrrh extract. Now, I just did a video on respiratory mucus, and this, but those two remedies, black seed oil, you can even get black seed extract and myrrh and uh, take them together. That's, that's really good for um, kind of like the deeper respiratory, includes sinus mucus. Um, there's also the uh, salt machines that you can get in the room to actually kind of clear out um, mucus and help lung issues. Um, 
I did a video on that recently. But you really got to get these kids off the sugar that feeds the microbes. The enzyme that you're taking is good to clean it up, but I think we have to stop the production of that mucus too and uh, do it more naturally. Yes, so um, the motto of the story is to start your kids off keto friendly and sugar free, right? Yes, of course. Okay, Why good. are you looking at me? When uh, because we have Lucy. We have Lucy, yeah. our grandbaby. Yeah. And she's, I mean, not keto, right? She eats every two hours. I mean, not IF. Well, you don't want to start babies out in IF until right, they're at least one years old <laughs> when they start jogging and exercising. All right, so what do we got? Do we have a good question? Okay, well, it's exciting. Social media this morning. What? What's the relationship between a fatty liver and keto and IF? Do you have any opinion? Have you ever discussed that ever? Hmm, fatty liver? Hmm. I have about 10 videos on that. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the, it, this is great to do um, for a fatty liver because what happens is you drop insulin. Really what's behind a fatty liver is high levels of insulin, which is usually connected to insulin resistance. So insulin converts things to fat, Every, that fat has to be stored, so the body starts off filling up the liver with fat, and once that's filled up, it spills off into um, around the organs and in between the organs. And so, if you want to know if you have a fatty liver, and let's say you you don't want to go get an ultrasound, just look down, and if you can see your belly sticking out, okay, then we know it's probably a fatty liver. But a best test would be to get an ultrasound, mm. and uh, and just cut down those carbs and you'll, the, the, the fat will come off eventually. Intermittent fasting is going to be key as well. And some people need to do not even one meal a day, one meal every other day, which is going to coming up in a new video at a location near you. All right, so Susan, you're from Oregon. You had a question about inflammation. Go ahead. Yes, good morning, Dr. Berg good and morning. Karen. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for all the information that you, that you freely give out on YouTube. Um, so my story is I found you because I had high inflammation. Mm. And uh, getting rid of the grains, I did that on my own for about a year. And that got rid of about 70% of the inflammation. Uh, I found your videos um, on, on stopping sugar. And I looked around and thought, oh, yeah, that's me. I really got to stop sugar. So I quit. And two days later, I was pain-free, and wow. I've been pain-free ever since. Wow. So um, I woke up in January 2016, and I, I had pain everywhere. I mean, I couldn't, I, I couldn't move any muscle, ligament, joint, tendon, whatever in my body without extreme pain. I want you to know how, what, what a thrill it is to be able to say, I have no more pain. Wow. So what I want to know, I'm doing research myself. I do bioacoustics, which is vocal profiling. And um, so I can, I can do, do some of this research myself. That really didn't point me in the right direction to, to getting the answer here. And getting off the carbs and sugar did. What was going on in my body? What gave me all that inflammation? Well, I... Um... I'm very interested in this topic simply because anti-inflammatory medication is the most dominating um, medication out there for everyone. It's the most common group of medications among all the medications and way too many people are on that. So, uh, and it has major side effects. So um, what does it? It's the, it's the combination of a couple of things. First of all, high sugar is very oxidative to the body so it creates oxi oxidative damage. So, it, uh, it's kind of like corrodes the arteries, the joints, and it stirs up immune reactions. But also, the high level of insulin will do it at the same time. So your combination of high, excessively high insulin and excessively high sugar in the body, it just basically causes um, all sorts of chemical inflammatory compounds to get stirred up. Uh, it can drop your immune system as well. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why you cut it out and the body can... Like it's it's quite dramatic because um, I had the same thing. I had all this inflammation, and I thought it, I would I would try to take uh, turmeric and all these different remedies. But until I changed the diet, mm -hmm. 
cut down the carbs, go low carb. And then what happens is you get you run your body on ketones. Ketones are very anti mm -hmm. anti anti-inflammatory. So um, that's why. So Susan, I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. What are you able to do now because you have less inflammation or no inflammation that you weren't able to do before? Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, I can bend over and pick up after my dog without wanting to cry because of the pain. Mm. Um, uh -huh. I can get down on the floor and get up again without having to, like, brace myself because I know it's going to be so painful. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, I, I can just get up and down. I, right now, I'm sitting here, I'm crossing my legs. Before, um, before um, finding your channel, I couldn't really cross my legs. Not really. I mean, my, every muscle in my body is now so much more flexible um, let's see what else I have energy. Um, I, I don't feel like I've just got to lie down all the time. Wow. Um, I, I can get up and go. Another thing, uh, I used to have to cut my dog walks down really short some days because of the pain. Um, now I can, I, we can walk a mile. We can walk five miles. Wow. <laughs> we can walk as long as we want to. I think, um, I think another thing that was, go ahead. Another thing that was really obvious to me was before I found you, um, I would take long car drives because of the work that I do. And if I was sitting in the car for, oh, 10 or 15 minutes or two or three hours, um, and I'd get out of the car, when I first got out of the car, my feet didn't really work. There was so much pain. I, I'd have to hobble to mm -hmm. go to the rest area, the restroom. Um, and then it might take 10 or 15 minutes for my body to start circulating so that it wasn't so painful. I mean, there's no pain anymore. Wow. There is no pain. It's amazing. I think people take so for granted. So just getting rid of the sugar. Yeah. yeah. I think people <laughs> take for granted these simple movements, getting up, walking your dog, driving a car. They take for granted. They don't think of it. You couldn't do that. That's like a major problem that affects your whole day quality of life. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. That's awesome. That's Thank you, Susan. I really appreciate that, those wonderful comments. So for those of you out there that are inflamed, you need to do keto in, in uh, IF. All right. What, what, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Anything? Can, can keto make... Uh, make you taller? Make you taller. Was that the question? No. Okay, what was it? Can keto make yeast or candida worse? Um, okay, so I think that um, you could, when you start burning fat um, and you've been accumulating toxins, which by the way get stored in the fat and you release some of those uh, toxins, potentially it could create a release of that for sure. Yeah, it could. And if that happens, um, keep going. Take um, bentonite clay on an empty stomach between when you're fasting, you can take that. No, it's not going to knock you out of ket uh, ketosis. Um, but, but that's kind of rare. But some people have that. But it can happen. So, yeah, it can actually cause, especially when you do intermittent fasting, because you, you go through this thing called autophagy, which your body is self-cleaning. It's cleaning all this stuff out. And so you may have um, some temporary, you know, detoxing. Mm. But it's not... Um, very common. But if it happens, now you know why. Okay. I have another question. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So you know there's this idea that a virus just has to run its course. Right. There's nothing you can do, even okay. though even though they have antiviral medication, mm -hmm. or they put mm -hmm. you on drugs when you have a virus, but then, you know, the understanding is it just has to run its course anyway. Right. Can keto and intermittent fasting influence a virus if it's already begun or you're already experiencing it? I think it can shorten it a little bit, uh, but it is true once you get that virus, it's really hard to um, make it really short. But I think you could short it a li little bit um, by Why? doing this. Because what happens is your immune system does better. You're supporting the immune system, especially if you're doing intermittent fasting because your body goes into repair mode. Mm. Also, um, all the sugar feeds the bacteria and microbes and candida and yeast. So we don't want to do that. 
Um, but this is why you, an animal will lose their appetite when they're sick, and um, you will also lose your appetite because your body's trying to tell you, don't eat, go through the cycle. What's it doing? Don't eat. What? Right. Oh, it's good. Okay. And then the other, other point about that, since you brought that up, Karen, um, is that um, the thing that really triggers the viruses to come out of remission in the first place is a stress event. Mm -hmm. So it's really simple. Just avoid all stress and you're going to be totally fine. Sound good? Done. All right, good. All right, so Pam, are you there? Yes. Hi, Pam. You had a question. So I have a question. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. And, uh, okay, so I've been intermittent fasting and on the keto diet for about five months. Mm -hmm. And I had a blood work the other day. And I did have black coffee because they told me that I could, even on a fasting test. But... My cholesterol was high, mm -hmm. 292 was my cholesterol, total cholesterol. Uh, my triglycerides were 190. Okay. So am I doing something wrong? My TSH was up as well. My vitamin D was 38. Okay. What was your um, LDL? Uh, LDL was 205. Okay. And your HDL? 49. Okay. So um, a really, really, really good um, video to watch. It's on Dave Feldman's, um, you can look him up on YouTube. It'll explain this because when you do keto, um, you are running your body on fat. You are releasing a lot more fat. In the uh, fat cells, guess what you have in there? Triglycerides. So you're going to mobilize more triglycerides. Also, you're going to be consuming more fat. Um, so. He's going to explain to you, uh, while a, a temporary rise in cholesterol is not always a big deal, especially if you're eating healthy and you're keeping your carbs low. Um, so, but a lot of times in the transition phase, you're going to mobilize more fat from the liver, from the fat cells, and you are going to have some uh, higher cholesterol in certain people. Um, but it's not, the, it's not the dangerous cholesterol that they say, and there's just so much false data. I have a series of videos on cholesterol that you should probably uh, watch those videos and study them so you get the basic knowledge because it's a kind of a, it's a complex subject with a lot of big words and I would take an hour to go through the whole thing with you. So check it out and I think uh, you're fine Pam. Just keep going and keep your carbs low. Hey Jennifer, you're from Toronto. Are you there? Hi, hi Dr. Berg. Thanks for taking hi. my call. Absolutely. Hi. So you guys touched on this subject a little bit earlier, but I have more of a specific situation. So I've been doing keto for um, almost 10 months now, and it's going really well. I've had, like, so many symptoms totally disappear, um, you know, some arthritis and inflammation and brain fog and all sorts of stuff. But um, I go for these, uh, you know, fairly frequent ultrasounds for my gallbladder because I have a polyp um, over the last few years. And then my last one... Um, that I went for, it was just a few weeks ago, they said that I have a mild fatty liver, and this is my first one since doing keto. And I saw your video saying, um, where you look at the Guyton's Book of Physiology that says that keto can cause a fatty liver. Um, but I'm just freaking out. My mom died from uh, cirrhosis when she was 36. And uh, I know, um, I don't know, I'm just like freaking out. I'm wondering, do I need to go off of keto or was do I change my amount of protein or fat or something? Was it the first time that you had your liver tested or second? Oh, no, this is about maybe the fifth. Fifth time. And you didn't have a fatty yeah. liver and now you do? Yeah. Okay. So um, how, how, many how many times a day are you eating? Um, I'm eating, I'm, I'm doing sort of lazy keto, so... Um, yeah, I'm just like sort of eating whenever. I'm, I'm not that good with the intermittent fasting. Okay. And are you doing strict keto or are you doing kind of like a... Um... No, I think I eat too much dairy. And I also drink a lot of coffee throughout the day, which has some cream in it. I don't know. Okay. And then are you 100% with keto or are you kind of including some carbs with that? No, I'm 100% keto. Okay, good. So what I would do is I would just do the version... Uh, that I recommend out of this book because 
Um, in this book, I show you how to co combine it, and um, there's a real key um, word which is healthy keto. It's a healthy version of keto that will then protect in your cells and your liver because you're actually adding the vegetables, you're adding intermittent fasting, you're not doing too much coffee because that can stimulate um, a lot of cortisol. And um, I think also I would add choline to your diet. Choline really dramatically will pull fat off the liver. And make sure that gallbladder is um, moving so you, it might be beneficial to take some gallbladder formula because that will uh, also help mobilize the, um, the fat through the liver a lot better. And I think you're going to be fine. Do those actions for a couple months. Go back, get another ultrasound, and see how you do it, Jennifer. Thanks for your call. All right, Karen. Yeah. We are ready for your great questions. Go ahead. Give it to That's me. That's good. I'm I was ready. just typing something in here. Uh, a couple of people this morning really don't understand why we're not getting to their questions. Um, because we have 3,000. How, how many people? <laughs> we have 3,000 3, questions. 3,000? We're going to talk Thousands faster. Thousands of go you faster. out there. But keep in mind, there are also thousands of videos. 2,000. No. Actually, 3,500 videos. See? 3,500 videos, and you just put in the subject. I mean, there's no question that is not important. I get that. But there's just tons and tons of information already out there. So even if your very specific question isn't in a video, a lot will be. And I wanted to say one thing. Uh, I, I did a little survey, and... Uh, there's a lot of people doing keto and they're following the videos, um, but a great majority of them did not even know I had a book. Um, wow. And the thing is that um, what I did is I summarized everything in one book. This is like massive amount text. of time and energy of putting everything together so you have a reference point. So I actually lay it down step one, step two, and made it really simple. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you'll like that book because it's very um, easy to read. But it gives you all the details, so that way you're not missing out, and you don't end up with a fatty liver, you don't end up with this, you know how to do it. And it really handles the body types, too, so it combines a lot of different strategies. So I would recommend getting the book, and you probably you're, you won't be stuck in this mystery with a question as much. But right. we'll try to answer as many as you can, we can. All right. Okay, you go then. Okay. So we're going to go to Jerry from Los Angeles. You had a question. Hey, Jerry. Hey, how you doing, Mr. Duxberg, Karen? Good. Uh, quick question. Uh, nutritional yeast, uh, sorry foods, how much do you, should I take daily? Um, I think if you could take uh, a good one to two tablespoons, that would be best. Um, try to get the one that is non-fortified without the synthetics. Um, but one to two tablespoons is good. Now, the question is how to consume it. It's hard. You can get it in pill form, or you can just mix it with something. Um, you know, maybe make a keto bomb and stick it in there, or put it with little uh, nut butters or something like that. Yeah, I just spoon feed it. Oh, good. <laughs> and, You're tough. And then just drink some water. Good. You, yeah, because it gets. In your I teeth. actually like the flavor. It, it's not bad, is it? It tastes good. Yeah, I, it's kind of I a like, nutty. I, yeah, I don't. To me, it. it's cheesy. Yeah, it is cheesy. a bit cheesy. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks, Jerry. All right. So So here's a question about um, water filters. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about water filters. Yeah. Um, do you think a shower filter is necessary? Oh, my gosh. You know, when we originally got our shower filters, did you see the difference? Mm -hmm. I mean, it was like that chlorine gets absorbed through your skin, and it, it messes things up. Mm -hmm. So you're going to find... Imagine taking a bath. Oh, it's terrible. For you folks that love to take baths. You're soaking in, and it's not just chlorine. No, it's... It's all kinds of drugs. There's uh, a lot of chemicals. A lot of drugs um, in water, we, even some filtered water. We are going to um, come up with our own, your own filter because of a couple things. Number one, I wanted to make sure that, um, we, that people are using a filter that, that pulls out all the drugs, glyphosate, mm -hmm. and all the other chemicals, like... For example, and I won't mention any name, popular names for water filters, but like the top filters out there that don't even pull these things out. And plus, even the, the filters that are like pitchers, like you have to change the filter every 25 to 40 gallons. 25 to 40 gallons. Um, the picture on that how much we... water you drink, that's often. 
It's not, yeah. And so the filter that we're going to get is going to, it'll last 2,000 gallons. 2,000 gallons. So you're, pitch, you're pitching it. The pitcher, I'm pitching You're pitching the pitcher. The yeah, it's, so uh, it, it'll be going through five different layers and it'll clean stuff out. We just got a whole house filter. It's pretty massive. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, you're, the showers, the, you know, the water is a kind of a big deal. Yeah, you wouldn't even believe the drugs, the amount of chemicals and drugs. Antibiotics? That you don't want Prozac. to take. You're taking it anyway in your drinking water. Sinus medication. I mean, like, it's, it's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Welcome, okay. welcome to the chemical. Welcome to planet Earth. Right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we, I think it's Judex from Baltimore. You had a question. Are you there? Hi. Hi, Dr. Hi. Um, thank you for all the uh, great work. Um, I have a question. Will testosterone, I'm sorry, uh, will testosterone decrease with keto diet? Because I've seen um, um, ads online about um, at age 40 it will decrease. Hello? Hello, hi. I, I missed the question. I'm sorry. Um, can you ask one more time? Uh, will will testosterone decrease? Um, with keto diet, uh, at age oh. four, end up. Oh, okay. Will the keto diet uh, impact uh, testosterone? That's the question. Okay, good question. And it's, it's. I just released another video on that. There's, the keto um, lowers insulin. Insulin is the thing that probably is the most common reason why men have low testosterone. That's why even diabetics usually have low testosterone and they have problems in that area. So, by going on keto and lowering insulin, you're going to improve your testosterone. There's a couple of other factors to this, too, because you can also have high estrogen that will lower testosterone, high cortisol, which will lower testosterone, and even high iron that can lower testosterone. So, if you're taking an iron tablet, because men have a hard time getting rid of iron, um, women do as well, unless they're menstruating, but iron is one thing that doesn't go out of your body very uh, easily. So as you age, you start accumulating iron, and it can really corrode your system and drop your testosterone to the point where it can affect a little gland up in your brain called the pituitary, and it can cause all sorts of issues with testosterone and um, the male and female sex organs. So that being said, yes, do healthy keto and IF, and that will help um, your hormonal system. Thanks for your question. All right, Karen, Okay. over to you. We address this every week, but it's in demand. Gastritis? Intermittent fasting, gastritis, irritable bowel. Yeah. Okay, so uh, gastritis, you know, I always tell people to take apple cider vinegar, and then if they have inflammation in the stomach, they have gastritis, and it's going to flare it up. It's going to make it worse. Or if they have an ulcer, it's going to make it worse. So you don't want to dump an acid in there, even though they need an acid. They can't deal with it. So the other way is to take a good probiotic. And uh, the one I recommend is in a, called Effective Microbes. I have some data on my website about that. But that will actually start building up the flora in your gut that then um, take a lot of and, uh, stress off the other organs, including the liver and the gallbladder and the pancreas and the stomach. But gastritis um, um, responds very well to chlorophyll from wheatgrass juice powder or and even cabbage is, has certain factors that will help gastritis. Um, but don't take apple cider vinegar because that'll make it worse. Um, now, the more you have inflammation in the stomach or ulcers or irritable bowel syndrome, the less you're going to uh, do well with fiber in vegetables. So what you want to do is probably limit your vegetables, cook some of them, but don't you might want to just kind of cut them out for a, mo a month and come back to them because, believe it or not, um, the whole idea that fiber is going to help with constipation is false information. Or fiber is going to be good for your gut. It can be, but you have to have a good, strong digestive system. But if you have inflammatory issues or you have a leaky gut or you have those issues, believe it or not, you're going to do better without much fiber as you heal the system. And it has to do with um, overloading the microbes or another condition called SIBO, which is you have microbes in the wrong place. I have a lot of videos on that.
but just try to cut out some of the fiber in the vegetables and see if you don't get better with that. Okay? All right. Good question. Hey, Charles, you're from Mississippi. You had a question on your energy drop after you eat a meal. Tell me about that. Uh, well, I've been keto for a couple of years, had great results, lost 50 pounds, all kinds of uh, ailments have gone right. away. And I do pretty much one meal a day, but occasionally, not every day, but occasionally, after a meal, I will have a, a, a energy decrease, and and I sort of muddle through it, and then my energy comes back, and I'm all fine. Is that just low blood sugar after a meal or something? <clears throat> okay, like so that... that that can be, is it with every single meal you eat? No, no, just occasionally. Okay, yeah. occasionally. Then, fuddled. Yeah, so there's a couple things that can do it. Um, especially if you're, I think you said you're doing one meal, meal a day now, right? Pretty much, pretty okay. much. Yeah, so the, the, the challenge with some people doing one meal a day um, is you need to eat a big meal. And the more food, you are going to stimulate insulin to some degree. So if you do a bit too much, that can make, make a temporary low energy drop. But one of the things that I recommend is to take a combination of like digestive support, especially like betaine hydrochloride and apple cider vinegar right before the meal. That will improve the digestion, and that seems to prevent that drop in dip in energy. So that's one reason why your energy might dip. The other reason is you might still have a, a bit of insulin resistance, which probably not from doing this for two years, but that if you have insulin resistance, you can be tired. But the fact that it's not, cons not consistent means that it's probably you just need some digestive aid, and I would try some acidifier. That will help you greatly before you eat. Good question, Charles, and congratulations on your great success on that. Um, another question that I want to just bring up is that um, how about HGH? human growth hormone added muscle tissue. Oh, people taking HGH. Um, you don't really need to take it. I know it's an anti-aging thing. You just need to get your body to make its own. Um, there's two or three activities that will increase your human growth hormone, which by the way is the anti-aging hormone. Um, it's made by the pituitary. It works through your liver. So the first action is intermittent fasting. You have the potential increase human growth hormone by massive amounts if you do intermittent fasting. Sometimes as much as uh, one to two thousand percent. When you do exercise, especially like even like sprints or high intensity, you can increase between 400 to 700 percent growth hormone. Getting a good night's sleep will increase growth hormone. Um, and also um, sunshine and um, getting more sun can do it. Keeping your stress low can increase human growth hormone. Uh, make sure your liver is, making sure your liver is healthy can also enhance growth hormone because if you have a fatty liver, that can inhibit your human growth hormone. These are all things that um, you can do. All right, Karen, you had another question. I, I know, do. A burning question. I do, I do. So uh, how can you prevent loose skin when you're losing weight? Because you're going to lose a lot of weight when you do keto and intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. You're going to drop the weight. <laughs> Well, the and, and I just want to mention, you know, there's a lot of talk about different diets. We talked about this the other day. Why should you do keto? You know, I want to lose weight. You want to lose fat. Any diet, any diet, no matter the name of the diet, if you are burning fat, that is called ketosis. So that is happening in absolutely any diet. So healthy ketosis, which is what is discussed here and in the book and in the videos and the website and everywhere with intermittent fasting, this formula is the healthiest way to heal the body and you happen to lose a lot of weight. I just yeah. need to throw that in there because sometimes there's this conversation about what diet to, to do and it's really not about a diet. It's like this is how your body functions. And <clears throat> if, your, if your goal is to lose fat, like you can lose weight and lose all your muscle, lose water, is that your goal? Or do you want to lose actual fat? So when you say, I want to lose weight, you're really saying, I'm going to lose fat. I mean, am I right? I, I want to lose fat. So 
ketones are the byproduct of losing fat. So you would want to get into ketosis, which is, which is uh, a process of a byproduct of burning fat. Now you also are burning um, other like um, fatty acids. You can burn that too, a good amount of those. But you also want to burn ketones at the same time. The point is this. Um, it's kind of like uh, if you want to drive a car, um, your goal is to, you need to use the gas pedal, right? So if you want to lose weight, you have to get into ketosis. That's like a no-brainer. So ketosis is a natural phenomenon of losing weight. Right. And it's, it's the right. fastest way to lose weight. It's not like weight. a fad. It's not Dr. Berg's bright idea. No, y I mean, You know, just... people ask about the research and the research studies. And first of all, there's a million of them. If you challenge that ever, you just do some of your own homework. It's everywhere. And as a matter of fact, medical doctors all over the world are discovering this and beginning to implement this way of eating to heal the body and to help the body burn fat and recover from things and stuff like that. So it's just interesting. I just had to lob that out there. But the original question was, what about loose skin? Well, the, the, the principle that I like that I talk about in the book in is the book. to get healthy to lose weight, not lose weight to get healthy. We're in a, so a little it's get healthy to lose weight. Go right. So it's basically get healthy. And I'm talking about getting healthy as a primary goal. So not just you're losing fat, but the muscles, the joints, the skin, mm -hmm. your brain, your eyes, your, your hair. hair, your hair, um, <laughs> all actually improves. And so those things are actually getting better. So um, that's why Instead of focusing on just the weight loss, like is your skin improving and the texture and the quality? Yes, you're gonna to have to exercise. I'm sorry to break this to you. You're gonna to have to exercise, especially if you're menopausal and you need you have loose skin. You're gonna to have to do that because that's gonna enhance growth hormone and that's about collagen. So you're gonna to have to do a combination of that and you're gonna also have to lower your stress. I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to do that. You're gonna to have to sleep more. You may have to lower your your amount of coffee you drink to no more than a gallon a day. I'm sorry, you're gonna to have to do that. All right. You're so, you're I'm so mean. mean. I'm mean. But if you wanna be healthy, that's what you have to do. Do you see Terry out of the corner of your eye? Terry's doing, I'm not Terry's sure what, he's, like, what does this mean? What is he, I, I don't know what Round he's doing. I think up. he's from Texas. I don't know what he's doing over there, but I think he's telling he's, us to wrap it up. Yeah. So on that note, we got Karen. The thumbs up. Yes. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Have we really fun appreciate your holidays. great questions. Experiment with a lot of keto recipes. And we will talk to you next, next. week.